Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Zantonetti, and uh, today's message is, I believe, what God wants to share, at least through this broadcast, is very important because God is a God of grace and love and mercy, but let's not forget, He is a God of wrath. Well, today's message is, God, why are you so angry? (laughs) Why are you so angry? Let's look at this picture for a moment and just see, this is, of course, this is just a little uh, something. Uh, This could represent a lot of things, you know, but we know that a time is coming that God's wrath is going to begin to be seen in a mighty way. Right now, we're seeing the beginnings of it. Jesus spoke about birth pains. Well, let's look at the verse of Scripture. It says, For God's wrath is being revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and wickedness of those who in their wickedness suppress truth. That's Romans chapter 1, verse 18. Now, the wrath of God at least that term is found at least 10 places in Scripture. And I put those reference Scriptures there in case you want to go back after you see it. I'm sure you could find your own. And look at it and put it in your heart. Put it in your mind. Because we usually don't put Scriptures about wrath in our minds, do we? Mm -hmm. We have all the Scriptures of blessings and prosperity, and that's good. But wrath is found at least 121 times in the Bible. And basically what it means, it means to stretch oneself that is to reach out after, to long for, or desire. So God has been warning man for a long time that his hand is going to stretch out, just like he did in the times of Noah. And so we're seeing that Jesus died upon the cross and he brought us justification, but there's a wrath of God coming because of the Uh, rejection of the gospel. Now, the wrath of God is also revealed in the gospel as part of God's righteousness. So we see that the primary, primarily the revelation of justification is in fight, excuse me, is in faith in Christ. The primarily revelation of justification is faith in Christ. But there's another which is opposite, and it's a revelation of the disclosure of divine wrath. God brought salvation into the world to save us from something. (laughs) We're going to be saved, right? It's not just being saved from our sin, but being saved from the pollution and the destruction that's coming in this world. You know what I find amazing? That we sing a song, it's called the Battle Hymn of of the Republic. And it says, my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He have loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Now, you know what I find amazing? We sing this song. But do we understand it's not just about God's favor on the United States to come against the enemy. But the wrath of God is being worked. And we see it in humanity every day. The proof is seen in the present condition, both Gentile and Jewish world. And first of the Gentile world, we see here in Romans chapter 1, 18 through 32. But now, understand this, that... The Lord says that my spirit won't remain with human beings forever, meaning because they are truly mortal. He says their lifespan will be 120 years. This is what God told Moses. My spirit will not strive with man forever. I'm going to give him 120 years to get it together. And during those 120 years, we see that he built an ark and only eight out of millions got saved. We know that the road to heaven is narrow. Now, in John chapter 3, verse 36, it tells us, the one who believes in the Son has eternal life, but the one who disobeys the Son will not see life. Instead, 
The wrath of God remains on him. I want you to know that every person, that includes anyone in your family, even your children. Of course, we believe that the covenant of grace is extended to our family, our immediate family, I hope. But you know, you have people in your extended family that you just know that they uh, they don't follow Jesus. And at this point, at this point in their life, in everyone's life who is not saved, the wrath of God is on them. They are destined for the wrath of God. Every unsaved person, all the things that you see in this world that is unsaved will meet the wrath of God. But what about us believers? Well, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3, it says, Indeed, all of us once behaved like them in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and senses, by nature, we were, past tense, destined for wrath, just like everyone else. Understand that the children of God are not destined for wrath. But will we see it? Look in the streets. We're looking at the penalty of sin in man storing up the wrath of God. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven in the divinely inflicted penalty for grievous sins. Folks, you don't believe for one moment that everything evil that's happening in the world is by a coincidence, right? Something is working in humanity, and we know that Satan is loose. Curse him. And his, and his warring evil alliances are working in the minds of men or man, Destroying the earth. How many movies have we seen that man makes about the end of the earth? How come there's something inside of every one of us knowing that the world in this condition cannot last forever? I mean, it's already revealed in us. There's always a savior at the end, at least at, most of the time. But how many times New York City gets destroyed in movies? What is it about New York City or the United States that get destroyed and then the world along with it? But it's always New York City for some reason. It's the melting pot of sin. It is directed against all immorality, the wrath of God. Why is God so angry? Because of the immorality of man. And because everything that we do that is against God is directed against his righteousness. And God's wrath is going to be against unrighteousness. For what can be known about God is plain to them. Because God himself has made it plain to them. Where has he made it plain? Well, we're blind when it comes to the natural. But he's made it plain in Psalms, this is the first writings of the Word of God ever. It's the first publication of the Word of God written in the very nature of the earth. Psalms 19 verse 1 4 says, The heavens are declaring the glory of God, and their expanse shows the works of His hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Did you hear that? Night after night they reveal knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words that their voice is not heard. God is constantly speaking and showing us his, uh, his creative power in the heavens. Yet their message goes out into all the world and their words to the ends of the earth. Watch this. He has set up a tent for the sun in the heavens, meaning that God has a time and he has a place for everything. The universe is held together. The earth is held together in its rotation. I mean, you think about this for a second. People talk about evolution, that, you know, uh, that the world was created without God. And yet we have planets that are circling the earth, perfect, cannot be broken. How does that happen? How can evolution do that? No way. There is a God who created the heavens and the earth and, and, it speaks to us that there's a God. How blind can a person be when they look at a tree? 
How blind can they be when they look into the heavens and say, there's no God? I was living next to a person one time. They had a couple. They had a, this, a, you know, a green thumb. They knew about flowers and everything. And one day, we uh, were coming home from shopping or doing something, and my wife and I were talking to them. And uh, you know, he told us, you know, I, I was, I think I was complimenting him about the flowers, you know, in, in, in his, uh, you know, around his house and everything. He says, you know, you have these beautiful roses growing on the side of your house. And I said, I do. He says, you never saw the roses in your own backyard. Mm-hmm. Never forget that. And sometimes we're so blind to the nature that's right around us. But for, but not, listen, from since the creation of the world, God's invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature has been understood and observed by what he made so that people are without excuse. What's going to happen? People are going to stand before God on that day and say, God, you have no excuse. God's going to tell them, you have no excuse. I gave you the heavens. I gave you trees. I gave you water. I gave you the birds. I've given you all these things to look at, to admire, and know that I am the one that created all these things. I am the one that put it all together, and you refuse to see it. There is no more blind a person who has eyes to see and yet is blind, thinking that there is no God. Now, the righteous will see and feel it. If you don't feel the evil of this world and what's going on right now, who's the blind one? If you can't see the evil that's happening right now all around us, who's the blind one? Because there's so much happening in the world and it doesn't matter whether it is from a political standpoint of view, from whatever point of view you want to talk about social point of view, philosophical point of view. It doesn't matter. It is evil and it is working itself, weaving itself through all humanity. And let me tell you something. There has to come a point that God says, enough. And yet Jesus comes to die for the sins of this world, for the sins of many, for the sins of his people, And you don't think for a minute that the whole world is going to be saved. I mean, that's called universalism. That no matter what, man is going to find his way to God to be saved. No. Years, years ago, I was reminded in a simple thought that every man, every road leads to God's throne. Only one road leads to Jesus Christ. That's the cross. But every road is going to lead them right to the throne room of God where they will, where they're going to be judged. It doesn't matter what. Only those who accept Christ will be standing at the right hand watching the goats, those who are unsaved, to be thrown into the lake of fire. And it's incredible how we don't hear messages like this anymore. I'm sure there are. But very rare do we hear now about the wrath of God or about hell or get saved or you're going to be thrown into the lake of fire. Why? We're too busy trying to preach prosperity, which is okay. God will prosper you if you're obedient. I mean, you don't believe that you're going to be prospering in God if you're disobedient, right? I mean, there has to be some conditions to the blessings, the ultimate blessings, the prosperity of God has to be based on obedience. But if that's what we're all about, trying to build a world without fear, a world without hate, a world without any kind of stress, because we're Christians and God wants us to be so blessed that we're not going to feel anything, we are in trouble. We're going to feel it. We're feeling it right now. And there's no way to escape it. Man's mind is bent on destruction. The evil inclinations of the heart compels us to make a world without God. This is the whole concept. Just look. And folks, I'm going to say this right now, real simple, because I watch the news. I'm watching our own government trying to run a world without God. But isn't that what it's going to come to? That's what the Antichrist is all about. 
It's a world against Christ. Jesus said, they're going to hate me. They're going to hate you because you belong to me. And Peter speaks about the corruption of this world, but yet we know that those who have Christ have a divine nature to escape the pollution of this world. But what's going to happen? What are we going to do while we're here? Well, how terrible it will be, Jesus said, for those women who are pregnant, who are nursing babies in those days, because there will be great distress in the land and wrath against this people. That's going to be so hard. Many of us have seen movies about the last days. People still asking questions about the church. Will we go through the great tribulation? We're going to feel a lot of things before we're taken out of this world. Now, watch this now. What about the church? We're supposed to be preaching the gospel, but the world is sleeping in the dark that the church just can't fight because it's asleep in the light. The Lord saw that human, that humans, you know, uh, the evil was growing more and more throughout the earth with every inclination of people's thoughts becoming only evil on a continuous basis. Wow. Wow. Continuous. That means, watch this now, it's not going to get better. And don't think that it is. And I, I find it sometimes, well, it, it disturbs me when, when, we, when I hear people praying, oh, God, please take away all the pain and the, and the stuff of this world. And I'm like, that's not going to happen. Lord, let there be peace in this world. That's not going to happen. We're coming to the end. <laughs> and if you find ultimate peace, listen, ultimate peace in this world that is completely peaceful the Antichrist already has taken over with a false peace. Mm. Then that means we're still here. That means we're going to go through some stuff. But hopefully, we'll be taken out. But while we're here, we're going to feel some things. So we must pray with wisdom. Stop praying like this. God, please remove all the contradictions and stop the world from, it's not going to happen we must pray for strength as a church god keep us strong through the waters of adversity keep us standing in the midst of affliction in the midst of evil help us to shed our light the light that you gave us we must continue to warn the world of god's judgment folks it's coming it's here and it's going to destroy God will keep you in the midst of the fire. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it. But look what it says in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 1.10. And to wait for the Son, whom he raised from the dead, to come back from heaven, this Jesus is the one who rescues us from the coming wrath. We're not children of wrath, but we're going to see some things before Jesus takes the church out. Pray with wisdom. Continue in the word of God, and let nothing take you, take your focus out of the purpose for which God saved you, is to preach the gospel to the lost, warn them of the coming wrath. God is angry, and his wrath is going to come. God bless you. Have a wonderful, spirit-filled day. Amen.